Hello and welcome to Network. My name is Spumele Lezondi with your technology and social media news. If you want to be a part of this tech conversation, you must hashtag SABC Network. You can also find us on SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. News Network at sabc.co.za on email. Let's take a look at what's coming up in the program. Now parents struggle with ways of monitoring their children's activities online. This is important as they can see adult content when they aren't monitored. Biometric systems have been brought into Uganda to improve the documentation of refugees. And Forbes says the world's two richest men are tech entrepreneurs. In our discussion, we ask why Africa's tech entrepreneurs don't make the list. To help us answer that is Adam Oxford from HCX Team. Hello, Adam. Hi, Super Lurley. How are you? I'm all right. Now, why aren't Africa's uh, tech entrepreneurs there? Well, that's a good question. We clearly have a lot of tech entrepreneurs. The question is, why aren't they making vast personal fortunes? And I think um, there's some good reasons for that. All right. We'll have a further discussion about that later in the program. First, let's start with your technology and social media news. You might have seen a WhatsApp message during the rounds about a supposed Google product called Kiddle. It says Kiddle is a child-friendly social network. We ask Google if it is one of their products. We also ask if parents should monitor their children's activity online to make sure they don't get exposed to adult content. There's a WhatsApp doing the rounds about a product called Kiddle. The message says Kiddle is a Google product, but in an emailed response, Google told Network that Kiddle is not one of their products. When we tried Kiddle, we realized that indeed it does block content that is not child-friendly, including words like naked and nude. In most cases you find that if you are exposed to something which is not meant to be for your age, you might end up being traumatized, you might end up feeling that you're inadequate. For example, if it's a toy that, that is too complicated for your age, you might feel like you're inadequate. If, uh, for example, with the networks, if the child happens to be researching for school homework and then something pops up, for example, pornography, that would, might not be age appropriate for that particular child. And it might end up being more traumatic than enjoy, uh, pleasant for that child. Clinical psychologist Joy Nguna Tebbit says parents should monitor their children's activities online. Everything that is out there, including simple toys, there's an age limit. The reason why there's an age limit for it is because at a particular age you're only expected to be exposed to a certain amount of material which is age appropriate and is meant to help you grow and help you understand yourself better. Boitumelo homeschools her children. She would give them tasks that they must research. Part of that research includes them using the internet. While having trouble keeping up with your kids' schedule, well, a new app called Life Connected has been launched to help modern-day parents connect and manage their children's schedules. Once kids enter the picture, family life gets chaotic quickly. Thankfully, there are smart scheduling apps out there that can do the work for busy mothers so they can stop spending time organizing. It's a tool for, for parents. It's designed for parents with school-going children or children who generally have lots of activities and you know they're going to school, they're going to ballet, they're swimming, they're doing multiple things, they're visiting friends, etc. Essentially, the way it works is the parent would download the app and the parent would then build their family and, and village. So the app plays on the concept of it takes a village to raise a child. So generally for most of us, you have multiple people that help you with your kids, whether it's your helper, driver, taxi service, auntie, granny, etc. Those people would be part of your village. Life Connected app helps mothers make peace with their busy schedule and focus on experiencing life's events instead of constantly trying to remember when and where they are happening. We've also put um, a little bit of a, of a fun functionality mostly for, for parents because what happens is 
when your child is getting fetched and taken to places, you're generally missing out stuff. You know, if your child is learning how to swim, you're not there, so you're not actually seeing them swim. So we've put together what we call the milestone tab, where the person who's with your child could do a little bit of a picture and send it through to you and say, you know, first day of school or butterfly land or whatever it is, or ballet, and, and show you little snippets that you're missing. And you as a parent would then show, share those to your multiple social media platforms. So essentially, it's, it's a tool for parents. The idea came after the developer could no longer cope with her busy work schedule to plan pickups for her children. The app was really a response to my own personal needs. So I've always, I mean, I work, you know, I've always worked. So I've always been a working mother. I'm a mother to two children. My husband also works. And we've always had help, whether it's with, um, you know, my children's uncle who lives up the road, or it's a helper, or a lifting service, or, I mean, it, it changes because a lot of those arrangements always, you know, sometimes they fall apart. Then you need to make put in a different arrangement and it was always a bit of a struggle for me especially as my job became a little bit bigger and my responsibilities got bigger because then I couldn't just slip out to go and fetch my kids you know and I was always on the phone um, I mean the text is not here what should I do and you know wh what's happening where do we need to go or I would get a call from the taxi service I'm at the wrong place and there's nobody here so it was those little niggles that I had to to deal with just in my day to day so the app is called uh, Live Connected, L-I-V-E Connected. It's available in both uh, Google, in the Google Play Store. It's also available in iTunes. And it's, it's fairly easy to download. The process of actually getting yourself started is, is fairly simple. Now, the Ugandan government has launched a large-scale program to verify the identities of all refugees in the country using biometric data. The exercise aims to verify more than one million refugees estimated to be living in Uganda. The Ugandan government has partnered with the United Nations Refugee Agency. They're using the UNHCR's biometric registration software. The software has already been used to register some 4.4 million refugees in 48 countries worldwide. The verification exercise in Uganda is the biggest in the agency's history. It is important to us to increase the uh, accountability and transparency not only to the government and the UNHCR and partners but also the donors who are very key in our operation. The verification is expected to better assess refugee data in the country, ensuring greater accuracy and efficiency to get refugees the support they need. Refugees who are verified and registered will receive new ration cards and their biometric identification will be used to provide and improve assistance to each individual. This exercise will help us build a good data set for Uganda and ensure that they are model for support to refugees where they give them freedom of movement, the right to work and provide this with open settlement approach is also sustained. Jennifer Mudamba fled the Democratic Republic of Congo seven years ago. Today she is one of the refugee volunteers working with the teams in Oruchinga, the first location for the exercise. They are forced to move from place to place. This is why we support this verification. UNHCR has a global system so that if a refugee comes to Uganda, then they know this is their new home. They can settle down here. The verification exercise is scheduled to be completed in the next six months. It is the CBC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram News Network at sabc.co.za on email. After the break, we chat to Adam Oxford from HTXT about those tech entrepreneurs who are on the Forbes list. Stay with us. Our stories. How do I begin? Our lives. When all seems to fail, we will raise our voices a bit louder for our justice. 
I, I went into absolute shock. My whole body was shaky. I couldn't hold a phone. But there he was. I couldn't believe the nonchalant that they were still in the area two weeks later. And in times when the justice system is not able to help us with our individual battles. I'm willing to do anything. These are stories on Cutting Edge Channel 404. It is SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram News Network at sabc.co.za on email. Welcome back. Now, Forbes says that there are more billionaires today than ever before. The top two richest people are both technology entrepreneurs. Amazon's Jeff Bezos topped the list of the richest people in the world. Forbes estimates that the CEO of the online store has a net worth of 112 billion US dollars. It's the biggest jump in a year. This this then moves Microsoft founder Bill Gates to second place. Other techies in the top 10 include Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, Telecom Saikun, Carlos Slim, and co-founder of software company Oracle, Larry Ellison. Now, while new tech has made some people a lot of money overseas, none of Africa's tech entrepreneurs made the list. Technology analyst Adam Oxford is in studio to try and help us figure out the reasons for this. Hello, and thank you for being a part of our network. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Uh, uh, now, tech has made people, uh, uh, number one, for example, move from number 30-something all the way up to number one. Uh, what's going on there? Well, so, so Jeff Bezos, I mean, he's not just number one. He's the world's first centi-billionaire. He's the first person to have a, a net worth of more than $100 billion. Um, and, and the reason for that is that a lot of his wealth is, is tied up in Amazon shares. And Amazon share price doubled in the last 12 months. So his net worth doubled. Uh, so it, it's not cash in hand that he can withdraw at the bank and, and go and buy whatever you can buy for $100 billion, maybe South Africa, for example, um, but um, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 a huge amount of money. How are these lists compiled? Uh, because it's it's net worth, as you say, it's it's not cash that you can go and grab. Yeah, I mean, this this is a really big project for Forbes. They they publish the list every year. They do a lot of research uh, on publicly available information. Uh, they look at who owns what stocks, uh, what the value of those stocks are, uh, what artworks they know people own, uh, and obviously that means that the list isn't always a hundred percent. Accurate, and, and every year we get people complaining about they've been included and didn't want to be included. They don't want people to know how much they're worth. Or well, apart from <laughs> tech, for example, Donald Trump would often say that exactly. his net worth is way more than what Forbes estimates it to be. <laughs> exactly, and, and and people like Donald Trump who, who 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 claim they're worth a lot more than Forbes estimate them. But but they've been doing this for a long time, so I think they've they've got a pretty good handle on uh, on how to work it out. Now. Would you say they get it um, almost there, quite right, almost? I think for me, the difference between having $100 billion and $80 billion probably wouldn't be big enough to worry about if I was, <laughs> if I was Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos. But I think on the whole, they, they do a pretty good job, yeah. 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 Um, and there are other tech entrepreneurs that are there. There's, um, we see people who have uh, founded um, Tencent, for example, in China. There's Facebook um, in America. There's um, Mexican telecom tycoon, um, Carlos Slim making it there. Um, let's talk about um, that and those other people as well. Um, what's made, for example, let's go, let's go to China. What, what's made Tencent what it is? Well, I mean, you see, in, in, in technology um, 
businesses in the US and China, there's, there's a big difference in the way they've grown. China, obviously, uh, there's been a lot of government support behind the industry. Uh, the, the yen has been kept at depreciated values. And it's, a lot of it's grown off of Chinese manufacturing as well. Uh, Jack Ma from Alibaba's there. And obviously, they, they, they have been supplying the world with uh, cheap electronic components for, for many years. In the US, you tend to find that it's a lot more about the very specific venture capital scene around Silicon Valley and Silicon Valley culture. And although, you know, we all like to think we could make it, we could be the next Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates, actually, unless you're part of that elite, yeah. there's not really many you self-made really billionaires in that list. Yeah. yeah. So let's move from the rest of the world to, um, and bring it to Africa now. There are no African tech entrepreneurs. Should we be worried? Mm. So... I think, I think the list as it stands at the moment is, is very reflective of the real world economy. If you look at the, the Africans who are on the list, and there aren't many, um, mm. their wealth largely comes from uh, commodities, mining. Uh, one interesting inclusion this year was uh, Michelle Leroux from Capitec. Uh, finance is obviously there because we're very good at, very good at finance. But, um, but really, I mean, the, the, the richest uh, African on the list, and indeed the richest black person on the list, uh, Aliko Dangati, uh, he's a Nigerian entrepreneur uh, in cement and commodities. Mm. And, and really, that, that's reflective of the way Africa's economy still is. You know, we mm. still do raw materials. We um, are, we, are we eventually going to get there? Because um, people have spoken about uh, bubbles. Like in the early 2000s, there was the dot-com bubble. Yeah. Um, and now it seems like there are other bubbles that, are, that seem to be passing us. Um, should we be worried that, they, that we're not part of these bubbles um, um, th that people are using to make new money? So, so there's certainly a lot of technology happening on the continent. I'm, I'm not concerned about, about that. I think, you know, we, we, we've heard from government recently that they're very keen on investing in Industry 4.0 technologies and Internet of Things. Uh, you look at companies like Andela in, in Nigeria. They, they've uh, received $50 million worth of investment over the last few years. Um, so there's definitely a lot of tech companies emerging. Are we going to get those big tech billionaires? I think probably not. I think, I think a lot of the, the companies and a lot of the initiatives like M-Pesa are happening as part of existing organizations. Yeah. Uh, the addressable market size in Africa is, is nowhere near what it is in, in the US and China and Europe in order to, to create those big scalable technologies. If, if you look at the net worth of uh, Take-A-Lot versus Amazon, you yeah. know, the market reach is just it's incomparable. And, and Adam, um, in your your view um should we be getting people who are making this much money 112 billion us dollars in net worth so i, th I think i think that kind of personal wealth generated from technology entrepreneurship i think I think and I, I kind of hope that those days are over. I mean, you look at the way that those fortunes have been amassed and it's because we, cause we're centralizing a lot of services in, in a very small geographical location. They're companies that have had huge amounts of venture capital. Amazon's profits went up last year, uh, or Amazon's share price went up last year because they've started turning a profit, but they've had so much runway to do that because they've received so much investment over the last few years. We're never going to see that kind of investment here. And I think, I think for me... I don't really want to see many African billionaires making money out of tech that hmm. way. We'd, when, when we talk about technology and, and, and business now, uh, even the WF, WEF is saying that they're looking at profit with a purpose. They're looking at new models of ownership yeah. that don't focus the wealth of the company in one person's hand. And I think that's really where things yeah. get exciting. How do, you, how do you create great initiatives and make sure more people benefit from them than the one guy at the top? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Adam Oxford, um, technology analyst. Thank you very much for being a part of our network. Pleasure. All right. Now we caught up with singer Lady Zamar and asked what her favorite tech is. For the first time in my life, I found what I like. His name is El Diego and the Ama Espanol. My name is Lady Zamar, and my favorite piece of technology is the microwave. I know that's kind of strange, but I hate eating the cold food. I think when God gave somebody the idea that there's a microwave that can heat up food, that was like one of the best things. So it's just like when you discover fire. Who doesn't like to discover a fire? So I love the discovery of the microwave. SABC is the official broadcaster of the 2018 FIFA World Cup Russia.
Meningitis is a potentially deadly disease that affects more than one million people worldwide each year. Well, it's an infection of the, the lining of the brain and the spinal cord. Um, and it's usually, it's caused by a variety of uh, bacteria. And also, importantly, with fungal meningitis, there's no transmission from person to person. In South Africa and elsewhere in the world, the ministries of health itself have, have recognized this as an important disease to prevent. And vaccines have been introduced into immunization, routine immunization programs. It's really important to prevent. And the best way to prevent is to have people know their HIV status, start antiretroviral treatment as soon as possible. For all your health news, join Health Talk every Saturday from 9 to 10. All right, don't forget to find us on social media. We are on SABC Network. That's across all platforms. Now, two artists revealed their virtual reality artworks in London's Royal Academy, and China is working on launching a wideband internet access satellite. These are some of the stories that made tech headlines in the last week. <laughs> Two world-renowned artists, sculptor Anish Kapoor and performance artist Marina Abramovic unveiled their first ever virtual reality artworks at London's Royal Academy. So you know that artists always was using technology that is available at the time. Right now we are 21st century, we have virtual reality, we have augmented reality, we have new technology and this is a tool to use for creating new ideas. Bramovic, who is known for her long-term art installations and for her celebrity collaborations with the likes of Jay-Z and Lady Gaga, said that the experience of making a digital avatar was challenging. Rising by Marina Abramovic and Into Yourself, Fall by Anish Kapoor will be at the HTC Vive launch at Art Basel in Hong Kong from 29 to 31st March 2018 for visitors to experience. In Geneva, established sports car brands as Porsche and Lamborghini are losing their speed crown to lesser-known rivals offering electric supercars boasting record acceleration. Sports car drivers have long reveled in the muscular horsepower of their combustion engine supercars with the time it takes to reach 100 km per hour from a standing start, a major selling point for some venerable brands. We yeah, have 1,914 horsepower, below 2 seconds from 0 to 60, so it's something uh, out of this world in terms of performance but also technology. And this is to showcase what electric cars can do but also we as a company. As parent VW pushes new technologies to turn the page on its emissions scandal, Lamborghini has recognized the need to adjust. The brand is working on hybrids while seeking to fully exploit the potential of its naturally aspirated high-performance engines. And now we head to China. The country is to launch the very first wideband internet access satellite. The constellation comprises of 156 satellites. This is the first time China has proposed the establishment of a wideband internet access system based on small satellites operating at an altitude of a thousand kilometers in low Earth orbit. At present, our internet access cannot be available at many places, but the Hongyun project will change it. For example, we can offer the same internet access to the Internet of Things, high-speed trains and planes as we have at home. Because of that Forbes list that you spoke about with Adam Altford this week, our Twitter poll is asking if you think Africa has good enough tech innovations that can work in the rest of the world. The good majority of respondents say yes, that number is sitting at 58%. Tied in second place are 19% of respondents who say no. Another 19% of respondents are asking what tech innovation actually is. At 4% and in last place are people who say exporting tech innovations is not important. 
And that's all we have for you. Find us on SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's News Network at sabc.co.za on email. We leave you with visuals of Anish Kapoor and Marina Abramovich's virtual reality artworks. From me and the rest of the network team, have a good one. Bye-bye.